Today I wanted to talk to you about capacity and, and beds because uh, it was recently let uh, known that the hospitals, um, specifically in red zones, but uh, you know, it seems like it'll be province-wide now, are, are being put into a 15% emergency sort of mm -hmm. capacity. Mm -hmm. um, so tell me about how that works for Mac and, and what's happening with your sites. We had a conversation last time about the possibility of having other sites as well, um, availability. So anyways, tell me a bit about what's happening right now with your bed situation. Sure. So maybe I could just start by saying it's a real critical situation throughout the province. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of that, of course, is related to an influx of uh, COVID-19 patients. So more of them being uh, uh, identified in the province. We have the occasional COVID patient that's coming through the building. Currently today, we do have two, one in each of the buildings that um, are admitted. And it, it is an issue for us in that we are over capacity right now. And it's mm -hmm. not really COVID related. It's related to um, other people that are seriously ill at this time of year and coming in uh, for care. Um, I would say that we've already reached our 15% over capacity availability in the hospital. We added 16 additional beds to the organization earlier in the pandemic. And at this point, uh, we are filled and we're over capacity. So then what you're telling me is that we're in a pretty uh, bad situation, I guess, in terms of what's available now, if we suddenly see a spike in COVID cases that need hospitalization. Well, it, it is serious, and I think that's where we're really uh, you know, calling on the public to take this seriously and do everything they can to protect the capacity in the hospital mm -hmm. and to really follow uh, the rules, if you want to call it that, that are out there. You know, stay physically distant. Don't visit people over the holidays. I know that's a sacrifice for people, but I think it's really important for people to understand how serious it really is. Uh, we do have plans in place. Should we have more people uh, present for care than we currently have capacity for? Um, and one of the, the drastic measures that I hope we wouldn't have to do would be to actually begin to delay surgery and other procedures and outpatient activity in order to be able to free up staff. Okay, so that's still going, because I know at the beginning of this, a lot of that was pushed to the side, but you're saying that's still kind of moving right now? Yes, so we, we have continued to do surgery and we're continuing all of our outpatient activity right now. Mm -hmm. But if we had a surge in, in for instance, COVID positive patients coming into the building or any other seriously ill um, individual, then we would have to look at some of that in order to be able to free up staff and redeploy them to look after the surge in activity that we would be experiencing. I mean, we do have other options. There is the PRU, the Pandemic Resource uh, Unit that's available at uh, Royal Vic and Barrie. Mm -hmm. uh, we haven't used that uh, to this point, but that is uh, something that we could be looking at as well if we had to uh, move some patients uh, down to Barrie. Uh, Natalie, recently we saw there was an outbreak at, not too far from at Georgian Bay Hospital. Mm -hmm. um, seeing that and seeing how that has, has just unfortunately gone a bit out of control there. Um, you know, how does that sort of, does that concern you? Um, what measures, I guess, are in place to stop something like that from happening at our two yeah. sites? Well, we continue to reinforce with the staff all the infection control guidelines that need to be in place. So uh, it's wearing your full uh, PPE, the protective uh, equipment, uh, when you're interfacing with patients. Mm -hmm. We've also looked at uh, some more restricted visiting policies. So we're still allowing visitors into the building, but we're not allowing in and out, for instance, anymore. Visitors are not allowed to bring in food or drink mm -hmm. or take their mask off during the day. So it's really, really important to try to make sure that we've created a safe environment for our staff and our physicians. Um, and then trying to keep that capacity op open for uh, people that may come because we want to make sure that we've got the staff and the space to look after people when they're sick. So let's talk vaccine because we learned recently that Barry's going to be the, uh, the spot to get vaccinations for first or uh, frontline workers. Um, any indication of when we could see some of the uh, MAC staff starting to get vaccinated? I don't think we'll see that happening until in the new year and it likely might be towards the end of January or February. That's a guess on my part. Mm -hmm. um, it's really about the availability of the Pfizer vaccine and it does need to stay in, in, at, uh, in the Barry site because of, of the fact that it's really difficult to transfer. It can't be agitated in order for it to maintain uh, effectiveness. Yes. So anyone that would need that vaccine would have to drive down to Barry at this point to, to receive it. The Moderna one hasn't been approved yet that I'm aware of. And until that one's available, um, we're gonna be restricted, I think, until we can have access to it. 
My understanding is that I believe it's South Lake and some of those hospitals will be started first. Okay. And of course, long-term care. Uh, the the uh, care providers there as well as any any uh, residents that can uh, be you know, immunized. Okay. And I also wanted to talk to you about uh, the testing because I know um, Muskoka's paramedics actually recently were, were moved into that uh, speedier testing that's mm -hmm. available. Mm -hmm. uh, is that, again, something that we could see hospital staff uh, having availability too soon? Well, we do have availability to the test at mm -hmm. this, but we haven't, uh, our lab license hasn't been, um, isn't uh, including that particular test at this moment. Okay. We've received all the equipment and the supplies that are required. We're just waiting for the go ahead. Can you explain to me the turnaround on that as well? Because I'm, I think people aren't really aware of how that specific one works and the benefit of it. Yeah. So we can, uh, you can get a result back within less than an hour. So I'm not really sure of the exact timeline, whether it's 15 to uh, 15 minutes to 30 minutes, but it comes back very quickly. And it isn't a definitive test. So at this point, we would be doing both tests, the traditional tests that would be uh, the, the swab in the nasopharyngeal area, as well as doing that one. So both tests would have to be done. It would help with more immediate uh, planning around the type of care a person might need to uh, receive or whether they should be going into isolation. Okay. But we would really have to wait for the other result to come back to have the de definitive result. And again, when uh, do you hope to expect to see that in place at, at the sites? Well, we were hoping for around December 16th. Yeah. Um, I'd have to actually check with the lab to see whether that go ahead has come forward. Uh, we do need to have some education, so the lab uh, staff would need to uh, undergo some training around it, mm -hmm. uh, and then we would be able to start doing that. It wouldn't be used, actually, for the uh, general population. Okay. It would be meant, really, for inpatients and our hospital staff to start with. All right. Well, Natalie, um, you know, that's pretty much everything I wanted to check in with you. But, you know, I want to give you an opportunity again. You kind of alluded to it. But mm -hmm. if you'd like to send some Christmas messaging out you know, specifically around the safety of this holiday season and uh, making sure that we do keep people out of the mm -hmm. hospital for COVID reasons. Well, I do want to thank our hospital heroes to start with. And that's all of our staff in the building, whether they're you know, patient facing or other support staff. And of course, our physicians, I think they've done an absolutely fantastic job. And I would just really implore the public uh, to try to keep them safe mm -hmm. um, and follow the rules and regulations. There's no question this is going to be a very different Christmas for people. I know in my own personal family, we're not going out. It's just going to be our, our family that, that's together. So it's, it is going to look different, but it is exceptionally important for people to really follow the rules. I know we're all getting tired, um, but we've been fighting up to now and let's continue to try to reduce the spread of this virus if we possibly can by following the rules. 